Are you stuck in wanting? Do you really want a woman? Do you really want a date? Do you really want your girlfriend? Do you really want your goals, but you just don't know what to do about it? They're just not coming to you. Well, we're going to be talking about that today specifically and specifically in relationship to releasing and letting go. You see, I run into so many clients and the first thing we run into is wanting. It's this wanting problem. A lot of clients don't realize that wanting actually pushes away you, what you want. We're going to talk about that in this video and what you can do to start to fix that problem. There is another choice. There's another way to think about this. And we're going to take a deeper dive into what that is so that you can actually start building up the courage to approach women and go get that woman of your dreams. Now, before I do, I want to invite you to like, subscribe and share. Definitely comment if you see something in this video that really inspires you. And we're going to take a deeper dive into that too. So let's get started. Before I get started, I want to remind you about the revealing process. The revealing process is a course I teach on emotional intelligence. It teaches you how to, at a deep level, process emotions so that you can start to shift your reality and build confidence. It's probably the most powerful tool I've ever seen for cleaning up your subconscious mind, cleaning up your thinking, cleaning up the way you feel about yourself. It's a very, very powerful tool. Um, you can also look at David Hawkins, letting go Sedona method, uh, courses like that. But I personally feel that this is the one thing that's probably changed my life more than anything else. Now, the thing that gets everybody stuck when they're learning to let go is wanting. I had tons of it. I was in want so much. I listened to so many personal growth gurus say, you got to have a really strong want. You got to go out and get it right. Abraham Hicks and, and people like that would always say, what is your want? You know, really amplify that want, really feel that want. You got to have that want at a huge level. Well, the problem was that I did that. <laughs> I amplified my want through the roof because I was listening, reading stuff like Napoleon Hill's Think and Grow Rich and, and books like that, which I'm not saying they're hundred percent wrong. You know, they would say a burning desire, right? But in the way I looked at it, I thought, if I want a little bit, then I got to want it really bad to bring it into my life. And the only problem with that was the more I wanted something, the more I wanted a woman, the more they ran away from me. The more I wanted a date, the harder they were to get. The more I wanted ultimately to be confident, the harder it was. Or in some cases, the stranger I came across when I talked to people, you see, the fundamental flaw in wanting is it creates something called psychic distance. You actually create a psychic distance between you and what you want. Well, if you think about this for a minute, when you have something, you don't want it anymore. You enjoy it, you have it, you experience it. You don't stay in wanting and you don't amplify wanting if you're going to get something. You go into an experience of having. It's a very different emotional experience inside. If I want a new car, then I start to think about buying a new car. I start to envision feeling what it's like to drive a new car, what it feels like to have a car. I start to feel what it's like to sit in the seats of the car. Maybe I go out down and test drive a car. The feeling moves from wanting into a state of actual having and being ultimately this feeling of being the owner of this new car that I have. When I wanted my GX 470, I wanted a 2008 GX 470 specifically so I could turn it into an off-road vehicle, right? For the mountains. And I looked at a lot of videos. I learned all about that vehicle because I was going to lift it. I was going to modify it. I was going to do things to it. I had pictured what I was going to do. I test drove them. I did research on it. And every little thing I did increased the identity of me being the owner of one of these vehicles because I started to get a real sensation for what it was like to own one until one showed up in my life. But unfortunately, when you amplify the want and you don't have that sense you can have, this is really important. This is really pay attention to this. If you don't believe you can have it or deserve it, if I didn't believe I could have that truck, let's say I didn't have enough money. Um, let's say that if I did get it, I wouldn't have enough money to modify it the way I want. So what's the point? And I started to become negative about the idea of getting it. And then every time I thought about getting this vehicle, I went into a state of anxiety, right? and pain because I'm like, well, what's the point? I'll never have it the way I want anyways. So I'll never be able to get the money together. Every time I amplify the want, all I'm gonna do is amplify the pain, amplify the imposter syndrome, amplify the feeling of lack, 
which is then going to make me more miserable. If you know the emotional scale, it goes apathy, grief, fear, lust, which is the wanting category, desire, anger, pride, courage, acceptance, love, peace. If I'm in wanting for something, really wanting to meet that beautiful woman over there and I want to go talk to her, I'm not going to run over and talk to her. That would be me making a choice. That would be courage. I'd be like, fuck yeah, I'm going to do it. Or maybe anger, fuck it, I'm going to do it, damn it. Or courage, oh man, hey, oh my God, you make me nervous. I can't wait to talk to you. It's this feeling of flow between me and the person I want to talk to. It's this feeling of energy that, that happens, right? But if I amplify want, there's, there's, I'm not going to go over there. I'm going to be sitting there going, wow, I'm going to get more nervous. If there's a se- and if there's any sense of anxiety in me, like I'm not good enough, like I don't deserve to talk to her. She would never like me anyways, that I'm not attractive enough. I'm not her type. Then the want is going to get bigger and the want is going to keep amplifying. And as the want amplifies to try to compensate for the insecurity, the insecurity is going to amplify. It's like a chicken and egg. As the want amplifies, the feeling of lack amplifies. As the feeling of lack amplifies, the want amplifies until I'm feeling like, damn, I'm not good enough. I'm never going to get what I want. There's a sense of just dreaming about it all day, but feeling that lack or that getting bigger and bigger, wider and wider, like turning it into the Grand Canyon of lack, right? And then eventually you just burn out. Maybe you get angry for a while and you pop into anger and you're like, fuck it, I'm going to go get it. You go approach a few women from anger or reactive anger and those women reject you because you're not present. You're not open to really connect with a woman. You got to open your heart. That's the embodiment aspect. You got to be able to feel right through here and open up and say hi, you know, and, and let them see your emotional body. Let them see your energy. But if that's shut down with anger and there's intensity, I'm like, okay, I'm going to lock out of all these emotions of insecurity, which are all through here. And I'm going to run up and I'm like, hi, my name's Brian. What's yours? And there's a sense of push or a fake smile. Hi, my name's Brian. What's yours? And then, then what's going to happen is I'm going to get rejected. I'm going to manifest the very thing that I'm afraid of manifesting. I'm going to create the very thing I'm afraid of creating. See, we're really good whether you realize it or not, and manifesting what we feel inside. If we have a sense of lack, we manifest more lack. If we have a sense of want, we manifest more want. We create more of a wanting experience. If we're thinking about how hard something is to make happen, we're gonna get the experience of it being difficult to make happen. If we're thinking about how women are always rejecting men, we're gonna have the experience of being rejected by the women because I'm going to put my armor on. I'm not going to open. I'm not going to let them in. I'm not going to enjoy them. They're not going to have a good experience and they're going to reject us. If you start really, truly enjoying women and letting them in long before they, you approach them, really seeing them um, and just kind of appreciating them, feeling them, letting your heart light up and you take them in and you feel them in your heart, you feel them in your stomach, you feel them in your turn on and you look at them they're going to feel that. And then when you say hi, it's going to be very different. If I'm in want and I wall off and I go over, hey, how you doing? My name's Brian. What's your name? Oh, I just want to say hi. You know, you look really good. And there's, there's, a, there's a little bit of a robotic energy. It doesn't feel real. But if I'm down and, and I'm dropped in a little more and I feel my body and I'm enjoying and I'm taking her in and there's no sense of want, there's just this sense that I'm going to enjoy this human being in front of me, not at a distance, but I'm gonna enjoy her in my heart. I'm the, that's the heart walk, right? I'm gonna feel her in my heart. I'm gonna feel her in my stomach. Then I'm no longer in want. I'm in having, I'm enjoying her before I even talk to her. I'm feeling the energy of her feminine saying, damn, that's nice. I gotta say hi to her because I'm already enjoying her. I'm already feeling her. So I walk over and I'll say, hey, what's your name? I just, I saw you over there and I, I just had to come say hi. You know, and there's a sense of connection in that. From there, you can be direct. I like you. There's something about you. Damn, you make me nervous. Or you can be indirect. You know, I just saw you over here playing with your dog. Thought I'd come say hi. You're, you know, dogs are amazing. Or you can be bantery and and, and playful. Uh, you know, I don't have anything bantery right now, but walking up to a girl in a bar, for example, and saying, hey, what's up? You look like you're causing trouble over here. I just thought I'd come say hi, you know, or something like that. Or 
or something. If, even if you want to do cocky funny, you know, I, <laughs> I love your sweater. My grandma has one just like it. And then she's like, fuck you. But she likes it, right? There's a playful, open hearted energy to it. And that's what makes stuff like that work, right? It's that open hearted energy. It's, it's a sense that if my heart was closed and I said that, and then I was a little more walled off. Hey, nice sweater. My grandma has one just like it there would be a it wouldn't be as good right but if i'm like nice sweater you know my grandma has one just like it and then she's like fuck you but there's a fun in that right a playfulness now i don't know if i'm mimicking these really well as well as as real life but in real life that's what happens is you actually are experiencing the having of the human being in front of you the experience of having let them into your core before you even approach them. There's a sense of feeling them in your heart, feeling them in your stomach, feeling them in your body, not a sense of wanting. If I walk up with a sense of wanting, I'm gonna be like this, I'm gonna have to defend because I'm not dropping the wanting and in having, I'm, I'm still in this defense because I have an insecurity. The only reason the wanting's still there is I have an insecurity. Another good example was when I went to jump out of an airplane. This is a perfect example, I remember getting on the plane and uh, and I was nervous and I was scared, but there was a sense that I'm really doing this the first time I jumped. And I remember choosing it and there was a vulnerability and a nervousness and the guys were giving a shit, right? Like, oh, nobody's died this week or whatever jokes they were cracking. And getting on that plane and feeling it take off and start to fly up in the air. It was like a VW bug with wings as we're, we're, we're hunched up inside of it because you can't stand up. and. There was a sense that this thing's bouncing all over the place. It could crash at any moment. There's all these emotions running through you, but that's the experience of having. There's this vulnerability and this feeling and these emotions running through you and you're experiencing it now. You're not sitting there thinking about experiencing it, wanting to experience it, you're experiencing it. So the difference between that and actually approaching a woman is if I approached a woman from wanting I would have, and I didn't drop into the vulnerability, I mean the strong vulnerability where I'm owning my emotions, courage, then I would have to be walling off to approach her. I would still be in this sense of, I'm gonna put my guard up until you drop your guard, then maybe I'll drop my guard. And she's probably not gonna do that. You approached her. And this is true with everything in life. As a man, if you wanna make money, you have to move into choice. You have to go out and take action. You have to move into expectancy. What's gonna happen with curiosity? Like curiosity is so powerful. What's gonna happen with curiosity when I make this sales call? Um, what, how can I be curious about this person I'm gonna do this sales call with, right? How can I be having experience of having whatever product I sell in work in this person's life, not the experience of I hope they buy, not the experience of God, I hope I make money today. There's a sense of expectancy that this is going to work. You have to develop that. I was talking to this woman today. I did an interview with her, a podcast, and she's her business has already taken off. She's just started her business and we helped kind of figure out her business at a business event. And I wanted to interview her because she was such an inspirational human being. She just goes and does. She takes action. She's curious about people. She's traveled the world alone. She's she's a go-getter. And she wanted to make friends. She just got to this town and she was talking about how she wanted to make friends. She didn't have any friends. So she just started, went on some one of like a, like a Tinder, but for making friends. And she started finding all these women that said, just email, message me on my Instagram, which she thought was a bunch of BS, but she collected like a whole page full of women and started messaging them and said, hey, do you want to meet up for coffee? Pretty soon she met up with a few and she met up with a few more. And then the next thing you know, she's like, this is, this is too inefficient. I need to make it better. She's not thinking about doing it. She wants the experience. So she's choosing to make the experience happen. She moved from wanting to choice. So she gets online and, and she says to send a message to them all. Hey, why don't we all meet out somewhere? and to just ask them all, why don't we just have a big party? You know, we're all on this message app together. She took all their Instagrams, invited them all out, sent a message to all of them. And she ended up, there was a few hundred she collected. She ended up with 89 women saying they would come to her event and or coming to her event. And she ended up going to a bar 
and um, and made a deal with the bar. Hey, I'm going to bring in 89 fit, attractive women into your bar. Um, there we, you know, let's make a deal. And she she hustled. She made a deal, and she went from a woman with no friends in a new town to making 89 friends overnight. And she just went in and decided to make it all happen. How many people would do that? How many people would take those choices? take those actions those are choices she's making to have an experience not wanting to do something the moment you have a want to take action some action i don't care if it's small if you're scared you're nervous you don't know what to say you want to say hi to women go out that day and just wave to three ask them directions do some kind of action you can shrink the action down really small you can you can take a scale of one to ten on the tension scale say ten is way too much and go down to twos and every day do two or three twos. I'm going to walk up and say hi to two or three women today and just wave. I'm going to ask them directions. I'm going to, and I'm going to do that every day for 30 days. And in 30 days, I'm going to take another action, another action, or maybe every day for a week. It depends on how fast you want to move up the tension scale. What you're going to find is if you start taking action and move out of wanting and start moving into choice, this choice, this to have an experience, you're going to start to get more vulnerable. That's the next step is the vulnerability walks, right? I put that in my videos, you're gonna learn to open your heart and let the person in front of you in. Like, I'm gonna say hi, and I'm gonna do my best to be vulnerable right here as I say hi. I'm gonna do my best to really feel that human being in front of me. What is your name? Where are you from? Tell me more about you. Or it could be as simple as, hey, I'm lost. You know, can you tell me where Starbucks is? I'm new in town. What's your name? Interesting. You know, hey, you want to walk together? <laughs> when I went to England many years ago, I, I didn't know what I was doing. That's exactly what I did. I just walked to women and say, hey, do you know where the Starbucks is? I'm totally lost. I'm not from England. And they'd go, oh, it's right up the street. Oh, really? So why don't you be my tour guide? I would just say that. Why don't you be my tour guide and walk with me? And they would. And I'd end up getting a nice conversation to walk up the block. And I say, well, let me buy you a coffee. It's that simple. If your heart's open, if you're grounded. And if you if you picture the difference between that and, hey, excuse me, do you know where Starbucks is? I'm lost. Um, oh, thank you. Thank you. OK. Well, you want to be my tour guide? Doesn't feel good, does it? But if I say <laughs> if I walk up and I'm, I'm my heart's open and I'm feeling good, I've been enjoying the sunset and the beauty and the wind. and It's perfect out tonight. And I walk up and I say, hey, excuse me. You know what? I'm lost and uh, I'm not from here. You can probably tell that huh, from the accent. Anyways, um, yeah, do you know where Starbucks is? I know, typical American, right? And then she smiles and I say, and she says it's up the street. And I say, uh, even if I know where it is, it doesn't matter. And I say, well, you know what? You want to walk with me? You can be my tour guide just for a minute and let's go. And then she, a lot of them will. And they say, you know what? Let's get a coffee together. But that open heartedness is what makes it work. It's that feeling of really enjoying the human being in front of you. Think about it. You like to be enjoyed. I mean, really enjoyed authentically like appreciated. You like to, f people love to feel like you're curious and appreciative. And you give the gift of that to another human being with no expectation of return. How can they not love it? So just look and say, yeah, I'd love it if you walked with me. It'd be really nice. It's just a block. Let's go. Come on, let's go. And watch, they'll go. And have fun getting to know these women. That's choice. Choice is the vulnerability. It's the willingness to feel the other person have an experience. It's the willingness to go first with the vulnerability and then invite them into it. So I want to invite you into this world of choice and this idea that you can have experiences from a vulnerable, authentic, courageous place, apathy, grief, fear, lust, anger, pride, courage, where life begins to happen, acceptance, love, peace. And that can be your life. If you start doing that every day, if you practice getting out of wanting into courage every day and have an experience, having an experience from courage, saying hi to people, socializing, enjoying the moment, your life will change. And then you can start making more choices. You know, instead of thinking about buying that new car and wishing you could have it, go down and sit in the, in the seat, hold the steering wheel, even if you can't afford it, take it for a test ride. And the more you surrender, the more ideas come to you, realizations come to you. Instead of thinking about starting that business, make a choice. Maybe say, you know what? I want to start a business. I'm a little nervous. I'm going to sell one client. 
to do their lawn. Maybe you want to do lawn care to start. I'm going to clean, I'm going to sell one office to clean their, their, house, their office for them. The, the, the business Bob Brocker became a millionaire in the first business. I'm going to be a coach for one client and see how it feels, maybe two. Uh, as my brother, my brother has a six figure pool cleaning business, right? So I'm gonna get two pools and clean them for a while and see how it feels. There's endless things you can do to make a choice and take action. And if you just sit down and take that first action, I promise you it'll lead to another one and another one and another one if you stay open and stay in choice. But if you go back to wanting and just dreaming and thinking, you could do that the rest of your life, which is what most people do. Most people spend the rest of their life dreaming about being a success, about dreaming about having the life of their dreams about dreaming of having an amazing life. See all the people on the hill, they're flying drones up there. You can see the drone in the air, I don't think you guys can see it. And we've got people over here playing with their dogs. It's, it's a beautiful night out, you know? It's, this is how easy it is to get your heart open and just enjoy things and then go out and make choices and get out of wanting. And just literally practice being around people and really enjoying yourself. And so, as you do that, just remember, life is meant to be fun, it's meant to be lived, and life can be awesome. So, with all that said, hopefully you enjoyed this discussion about wanting. I think it's gonna start raining out here, actually. <laughs> it's nice out though. Um, uh, put a comment in the video if you can, I really appreciate it. Comment about your experience between wanting and choice, and really let me know if you're getting the difference choice is about taking action right it's about being definitive it's about being decisive and it's also about having your heart open it's not just the action is with your hearts closed it's still not fully choice yet and that's the key part get your heart open and i'd love to hear your comments in the video about that it helps everybody to grow it helps me to grow too so uh so i think that's it remember only the confident really to see you in the next video